Always be closing. Always be closing. You're now listening to Boots to Business with Daniel Rabowski. All right, everybody. Welcome to Boots to Business. My name is Daniel Rabowski. You can listen to us every Sunday on WFLA Radio in 93.1, 94.1, 107.7. Or you can find us online at uh, boots-2-business.com. Uh, in the show... In the episode today, we're going to kind of wrap up. We're going to do two different things. We're going to cover two full hours with the same guest. And then uh, it'll be the last recording of the year before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And we're going to kind of set and prep for some some re-airs. So uh, the first part of today's show is brought to you by the Insurance Claim HQ, powered by the Hare Shannara Trial Attorneys. Their commitment is to help make you whole again after a disaster. You can give them a call at 844-252-4684. Visit them at insuranceclaimhq.com. Uh, in studio with me today, as always, Melissa Jacob from Striking Brand. Hello, hello. How are you? Are you ready for Christmas? Doing great. No, I'm not. I haven't bought a single present. Don't tell anyone. Uh, we won't. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest today is uh, Mickey Sprinkle. He is the Executive Vice President of Coastal Claims. It's one of our sponsors from the show. Um, and I'm going to pause here for two seconds and let him get his microphone in front of his face appropriately. So, Mickey, how are you today? I'm well. How are you guys? Good, man. We're going to... We're going to rock out two hours with you it's today. Amazing. Yeah, and uh, so um, I actually just got done doing Angela's show with you, mm-hmm. and um, which is Bad Radio. If you guys want to listen to that, it's B-A-A-D Radio. Uh, it's, the website's badradio.com, it correct? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of the things that we talked about was when I was on her show the first time ever, mm-hmm. I was the VP of Coastal Claims, which is Mickey's position now. Um, and... I don't know that there's a better person to have been um, my replacement, I guess, is for lack of a better term. It wasn't designed that way. It just kind of worked. Um, and because Mickey and I both come from very similar operational backgrounds, we're very, we're structured the same. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, uh, I think we apply a lot of the same things, different sense of humor uh, in certain aspects, but uh, sometimes too much. Yeah. And, uh, but he was able to look at a lot of the stuff that I had done there and said, oh, okay, this makes sense. We can expand on this. We can make it better. And that's what you want to have happen, right? Mm-hmm. Especially when you leave somewhere that it's not um, it's not adversarial. It's very, um, everybody's all cool. Nobody, there's no bad blood anywhere. And so you want to then, for that person who's taking your role, um, to to be able to do their job effectively. And mm-hmm. we so we, we communicate pretty regularly. Um, and I was actually really excited to have him on the show because one of the one of the things when you have a sponsor is a lot of times they want to come in and sit and they want to mm-hmm. be part of the show and they want to have somebody from the company be their face. And um, since Mickey lives in Dallas and I knew he was going to be in town for uh, what was it the roofing process conference right roofing process conference yeah um, it was Here's a good opportunity to to have him on here. So Mickey, give us a little bit of your background. I I know it right, but let's let's talk to some of the folks that. Um, who do know Coastal or may not know Coastal um, and, and kind of really understand that from a public adjusting firm perspective, you guys are structured more like a corporation than what you would normally see out of a PA firm. So there's a necessity for guys like you, right? Yeah, I think what you know really makes Coastal unique in a lot of aspects is, one, yes, we're, we're structured like a big corporation, a big organizational you know, structure, and everybody has a job and everybody has a role. That all rose back to, I think, the diversity of all the different types of key managers. No one, there's not a set type of person that we have there, right? Right. There's a lot of military. There's a lot of myself, um, strong construction background, really not in the insurance world at all, but commercial construction, many different facets. And everybody brings their own unique thing to the table, and we bring over the organization that I learned at a lot of the large construction companies where the construction industry and kind of the military and a lot of their organizational run parallel. I think that's why it was such an easy transition when, when you made your way out and I kind of stepped in and filled the void. And uh, like I said, the stuff that you have going just kind of rolls into what we do anyway. And yeah, and I think and the, and Mickey comes from a from the construction side, like you said. And there's a lot of, there is a lot of similarities there. But one of the big differences is that there's th- one of the things that's hard to, for people to understand too. When we talk about operations a lot of times is that there are different levels of it, right? Mm-hmm. So there's the very high 
functioning high level overview type of operations where folks will live in a space where they say, I have two or three direct reports that are going to send me information every day. I'm going to analyze that information. Mm -hmm. I'm going to disseminate and make different decisions mm -hmm. based on it. And then there's like the kind of in the soup um, operations person. And I think that's where most of your military type folks come out of. And that's where they land. They mm -hmm. land a lot of times in that um, at the troop level uh, operations. And then, you know, for somebody like me, I went and got my degree and all this other stuff to move and gain more knowledge in that space. But um you have to be able to have that balance. And and I think Mickey touched on something that um, I want to live in a space there for a second because he was saying that, you know, there isn't, there isn't any particular person that has an overly specific skill set over there. And that is one of the things to, to compliment Coastal is that they – they have bred people into positions, right? They've, uh, there's, there was always a capacity for growth. And um, even in the couple years that I was there, I watched people who may have been a little more apprehensive to have certain conversations or um, may have had some aversion to making some big financial decision or something like that. They've mm -hmm. grown into doing that. And I would assume that even since I left, which isn't that long ago, it's been a few months, but right. um, there's been – a growth in that space as well. I mean, was that? Would you agree with that? Oh, just a t and there's a ton of growth internally, externally, and there's a lot of there's a lot of space based on our size and our all the different things we do. There's there's a space for sometimes a person you hire a person for a specific job or specific skill set, and, and maybe they're not doing as well as they thought they would do or we thought they would do. There's always a a spot there to say well maybe maybe we've just tasked this person with the wrong thing let's mm -hmm. move them mm -hmm. right let's do a lateral or right sometimes it's a promotion sometimes it's a lateral but you can really having such a large company it's structured the way we do we can move people around until the people are doing what they want to do and what they do well so you know yeah. move it, people into a role that they're going to really excel at mm -hmm. well and in the hiring process and you have joked about this nobody ever comes into a job interview and tells you the things that they do poorly mm -hmm. um because they're not going to, they don't want to talk themselves out of a job, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to come in and, and, and let's let's call it what it is. They're going to embellish the things that they do well, and they're mm -hmm. going to not shine any light on the things that they do poorly. So, um, I, any organization that has the ability to laterally move people around, mm -hmm. I think there's there's value in that because again, you you might find that you know somebody who thinks that they're good at uh, finance or filing or compliance or whatever it is that they, they may also they actually may be better suited to do something else mm -hmm. right and um our industry is kind of unique and and i joke about it all the time and i know you've heard me say it a hundred times nobody landed in this industry because things were going well right <laughs> they, they they landed here because of a string of bad things happening or at least one that was mm -hmm. a, a pretty significant change in their life and specifically on like the public adjusting side and it it Coastal is kind of interesting in the fact that they are structured the way that they are. Um, it's more probably interesting about that is that they've done it in Florida with mm -hmm. as strict as the laws are in Florida. Um, it's it's always a weird dynamic because you, you you there's a couple other PA firms that are structured similarly, but they're in states that don't have the same restrictions, very strict mm -hmm. guidelines and rules. Um, there's one up in New England, and they have a, they're notoriously bad, mm -hmm. right? And I won't drop <laughs> drop their name by any means, but there's one up there that is it's been around for a long time. It's very large. It has a lot of people, but there. Was it Ryan West? I'm uh, joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> He's gonna answer. Uh, I almost did because I <laughs> generally don't care, but um, but it's it, it's hard it's hard to uh, deal with that many egos. It's hard yeah. to deal with that many personality types. It's hard to deal with that many different. Um, license and guidelines requirements for each individual state, and then you have, you're inevitably going to be dealing with people that are remote. Mm -hmm. um, Mickey lives in Dallas, oh, do right? You? So yeah. you know he's he's the number two mm -hmm. or a split number two or however you guys have it now, where he's six states away, four right. states away, right? right? And so that's kind of an interesting dynamic. Do you see that mm. as a as something that helps or, or hinders? Ooh. And that's something that we'll talk about when we oh, come exactly, back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to kind of plant that seed so we can we can live there. So um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. My name is Daniel Robowski. You're listening to Boots to Business. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. We now return to Boots to Business with Daniel Robowski. And welcome back, everybody. This is the second part of today's show. 
Uh, this portion is brought to you by Shield Tech Roofing Solutions, your premier destination for commercial roofing excellence when it comes to protecting your commercial property. Trust in their top-tier roof coatings and expert repair services. You can explore their specialized solutions at shieldtechroofing.com and choose Shield Tech for lasting, high-quality commercial roofing solutions. Uh, in studio, Melissa Jacob from Striking Brand. Hello, hello. And we have one of our sponsors, um, Executive Vice President of Coastal Claims Services, Mickey Sprinkle. Hello. All the way in from Dallas, Texas. Mm. Fort Worth. Whatever, let's, dude. Let's not get Close it twisted. Enough. Fort Worth. So that's one of those things, right? It's like the, um, I don't know what the Florida version of that is, but like Dallas, Fort Worth, everybody outside mm-hmm. of Texas just puts them all together. But mm-hmm. people who live in Dallas don't venture to Fort Worth unless, Fort Worth unless they have to and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, because I would lived in Dallas um, before moving here, and I can count the amount of times I've been to Fort Worth. I lived there for eight years. I can count the amount of times I went to Fort Worth on one hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. really? The cities touch each other. Right. Like it's Yeah, it, there's no, right. unless you know where the division line is, yeah. there's no bifurcation between them. You go run one right in the other. Why are you using so many syllables? I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so what, what were we talking about before the break? Oh, being long distance. Um, there we go. Six states away. I remembered. Which was that? I, I led into it's it close. and then I lost it. Yeah, then you lost yeah. it. Um, so, being that you, you know, do you find that as a help? Is it something that's helpful or hindering to you? It's, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Mm-hmm. It kind of keeps me from getting s- sucked down in the weeds all the time. Mm-hmm. And you can, you know, I mean, this is not just coastal. It's any, any, any person in any position in an office. You know, I don't have to deal with the someone stepping into my office all the time. Now we have an office. We have a fully operational office in Fort Worth. Grapevine, but it's not as big office like we have here. We got you know thirty, forty people walking around all the time, so I can get a little bit more concentrated, keyed in, and hard work done mm-hmm. than if I was in a big office. So that's good, but you know, then I come down here. I spend forty percent of my time here anyway. So my kids think I live at the airport. <laughs> that's bad. But you know, with if there was anything good that came out of COVID, right? It was that it taught everyone that we don't actually have to be there. Right. right, we, Correct. Can, we yeah. can jump on. Yeah, I counted the other day. I did thirteen zooms in one day. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's there's been plenty of times where I'll I'll text him be like, hey, shoot me a call when you have a minute. Mm-hmm. And then like four and a half, five hours later, he's like, I have twelve minutes before I have to get on this next. You want to lock it in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, it, that is. See, I see. I see it from both sides, and right. I see the hindrance side of it too. Where oh, absolutely. sometimes you're not in the room when decisions are being made. Sometimes you are getting the would you say recapitulated version? Yeah, um, you I don't even know that one. It's, it's a good one. It's you're getting it secondhand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and you end up playing the telephone game a lot of times because so and so said it, so and so heard it. It was told to three other people before it got to you, and then you're in a position of mm-hmm. a leadership position in that company. And so, mm-hmm. and again, not specific to Coastal, but anytime right. that you have somebody that's in a management position and they're remote, mm-hmm. you do kind of run into that. Well, hold on, what do you mean? Why was this done? Why didn't I know about this? And mm-hmm. um, that that disconnect, while it can be comforting sometimes, it can also cause you a whole nother level of anxiety and stress. Well, yeah. Before I came here, we did a two hour board meeting, right? Mm-hmm. And there was probably three or four topics. I was like, I didn't even know that was on my radar. Like, yeah, I didn't even know that was going on. Yeah, and that's that's the detriment of being yeah not on site. But then some of that is like, I'm kind of glad I didn't know that was going on. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'd be like, oh, that sucks for you guys. <laughs> yeah, that sounds uh, like a you in problem. The office. That's unfortunate. Oh, bad connection. Bad connection. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. happened? Oh, sorry. Um. So when you guys are looking, and and I know kind of what I look for when when a hiring practice conversation mm-hmm. came up when and. Being that the show is Boots to Business and that we talk a lot about service members transitioning into the civilian world and all that, you know, do you, and I know there was one instance where you guys had a vet because he applied before I left and then reapplied after I left. And it was like one of those, like, no, 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 don't call this guy. We're, oh, this we is talked the one about you're this talking together. about. Yes. Yeah. yeah that, that, and, this is a nice part about us having an open relationship because mm-hmm. I get this. The past knowledge too. It comes across my desk mm-hmm. as, hey, this guy is a disabled veteran, you know. Someone I would definitely reach out to and have a long conversation mm-hmm. with. I called Daniel and I said, "Hey, does this sound right?" And he was like, "Oh no, <laughs> no, no." Matter of fact, shred that, throw it away. Yeah. Don't call him because that the moment you do, you're in trouble. And but it goes in line with what Angela was saying uh, when we were doing bad radio. Is there is a misconception? I think I think that's the word she was looking for mm-hmm. earlier. Misconception mm-hmm. um, that 
all service members are just these, you know, profoundly efficient and in mm-hmm. and have a just a insane amount of integrity and it, it couldn't be further from the truth, unfortunately. Um it's it's tough sometimes because you don't while you want people to acknowledge the the skill set and some of the things that the military taught you, you don't want that to be the sole identifying factor, mm-hmm. right? Sure. Um I know in my time with Coastal, there was always a joke about, you know, Daniel's just going to hit it with a hammer. Like, that was just <laughs> my go-to. And very rarely did I actually do that. Very mm-hmm. rarely. Most of the time, I was pretty calm and, and mm-hmm. reserved. and But it was always kind of looming in the back of people's mm-hmm. heads. Like, well, at any minute, like, he's he's going to he's gonna make a decision. And, and the decision's not going to be scalpel. It's going to be hammer. Mm-hmm. And um, so you don't want it to be that one thing that people identify you. And, and mm-hmm. when you're hiring folks, it makes it hard because like Mickey just said on paper, all of these boxes were checked. Mm-hmm. Right. 100%. And, but somebody being in the service, cause when that resume came across my desk, I was like red flags red everywhere, flag. <laughs> everywhere, but they didn't know they mm-hmm. would have had no reason to know. Right. So I think you, how do you guys look at that when as a civilian, when you're looking at um, prior service guys coming in and applying for jobs and, you know, do you put them in a box where you're like, this is a, uh, a capable person that's going to expand on our skill set, or do you go, this guy can push a button like a monkey all the time, and like, or do you just kind of gauge it based on the interview? I, you know, I try to base it like totally non biased right on the interview, but when they say they're a veteran or they, you know, they see it on their resume, right? You, you automatically know, or you think the assumption is, like you said, that everybody is this great person, but what, what is nice when someone, most former military veterans, et cetera, you know they're going to have a certain level of integrity. Mm-hmm. You know they're going to be organized mm-hmm. most of the time. You know, they, and they usually can make decisions. That's a mm-hmm. problem. No one wants to make a decision, right? So you're a guy that comes in with some prior service, especially a lengthy service. You know, this okay, this guy's a decision maker. Mm-hmm. So whatever that decision is, whatever capacity we put him in, he's going to be able to pull the trigger on some things. And mm-hmm. a lot of it is just it's just personality, mm-hmm. right? And the thing I think, and myself, not a veteran, but but I think. Well, the nice thing is what the military seems to teach a lot of people and what really helps them, I think, in the business world is it's just a melting pot of all the people that they deal with every day, mm-hmm. right? You, yeah. Rich kids, poor kids, every diversity, every ethnicity. Right. So that translates well into the business world because Daniel mm-hmm. can sit down at a board table or sit down in a boardroom with anyone, Anybody. right, mm-hmm. and, 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 and get some type of commonality and make a relationship there. I think that's what really transfers. The other stuff you can teach. Right, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. can teach somebody to be organized. You can teach them to follow up. You can teach them to pull triggers. But what you can't teach is just getting along with people mm-hmm. and just being nice and being able to mm-hmm. accept people and talk to people and build a relationship and a rapport. And I think that's where a lot of the we really see the value in a lot of the veterans like that. I would say relatively dependable too. Do dependable, you think so too? yeah. I'm just trying no. to think of all the, God, all the vets. No, no? Oh, geez, really? No. I'm thinking all the vets in my family. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I, I mean. Describe dependable. That's right. right. Uh, and like, obviously, I'm 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 making a little bit light of that, mm-hmm. but I mean, if you knew, especially when you become an NCO, if you knew the depths of what you had to do to get guys to be dependable, oh, no. like I I mean, I used to have to make guys show up 45 minutes early. Mm-hmm. I used to have to go. There was guys in the barracks that I would have to walk through and knock on their doors in the morning. Now they got wrecked because I had to do it, mm-hmm. but there were guys you. There were guys that you couldn't get to do their laundry, show up on time. I mean, anything. And, th- and that's why it's so crazy when there's like there's always those key terms for service members like integrity and dependable mm-hmm. and blah, blah. No, no. <laughs> it's not any different than anybody else, mm-hmm. any other walk of life. Those are some of those traits are just you're you're naturally that person. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some of those are amplified by the service, good, bad, mm-hmm. and indifferent. And a lot of times you'll see a lot of service members get very, very overzealous in the decision making. Mm-hmm. They'll just say they they get so accustomed to we we have to make a decision. We got to move. We can't just stand here. Da da da. And then you you can stand on and be confident even if you make the wrong decision. But at some point you got to go, hey man, stop making the wrong decision, mm-hmm. right. right? And that's and that's a tough one to to be able to balance. And especially if you're if you're in a company that you may be the only veteran in, because you see that a lot too. And a lot of times the, you have to remember that the people on the receiving end of all of your personality traits that mm-hmm. are developed from the military may not know how to receive them. Right. So we'll talk about a little bit yeah. more when we get back. This is Boots the Business. I'm Daniel Robowski. We'll see you all in a few. We now return to Boots to Business with Daniel Robowski. 
And welcome back, everybody, to the third part of today's show. Uh, this is Boots to Business. I am Daniel Rabowski. In studio with me is Melissa Jacob from Striking Brand, as always. Hello, hello. And uh, I'll get to our guest here in a second. So this portion of today's show is my tongue twister, mm. Golden Temple Builders. <laughs> they bring, learn from the past, blowing it way one. down. <laughs> yeah, like the first couple times, it was bad. It was real bad. <laughs> um, Golden Temple Builders brings decades of expertise to commercial renovations and remodels. Uh, their commitment to you is clear written pricing options tailored specifically to your project. You can visit them at goldentemplebuilders.com or call them at 321-508-0815. Uh, the reason I kind of held off is because our guest is actually one of our sponsors. Um, he's the Vice President of Coastal Claim Service, Mickey Sprinkle. Hello. All the way in from Fort Worth, Texas. Now we're right. talking. Yeah. <laughs> At Dallas. Uh, so we were talking during the break, and as we kind of segued out into uh, the last thing, we were talking about the personality traits of, of service members and sometimes how they're a little bit complicated to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were saying that you were watching another podcast, and he was talking about Navy SEALs. So what was what was it you were saying? Yeah, it was uh, Andy Stump, uh, Cleared Hot podcast, I believe it was. But it was a business, but they were talking the exact same thing about he said, listen, some of the greatest guys I know, some of the best men I've ever met are Navy SEALs, and some of the absolute worst humans on the face of the earth are also Navy SEALs. Yeah. It was like there's no, just because you have that, same going back to what we were talking about in the earlier segment, just because you're a military veteran doesn't mean you're the greatest person, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'll be honest, as if I was a civilian, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to you know, because we were talking about stolen valor mm-hmm. earlier, like I wouldn't want to tell people I was in the service because of all the baggage that comes along with that, mm-hmm. right? right. And, and I just, you know, I try not to have conversations about things that I'm not educated on. Mm-hmm. And, I, and maybe, I think, maybe sometimes I think a little too highly of people. And I watch a lot of these videos of these dudes on talking about stolen valor and stuff. And mm-hmm. um, there was one just the other day, and it was this young blonde girl. For all rights, if you would have just seen her in public, you wouldn't have been like, she's a Marine. Right. But she was. She had a microphone in her hand, a shirt that said Marine Corps on it. Mm -hmm. And she was interviewing people. Mm -hmm. And this old man, she walked up to him and she said, you know, it was something having to do with whatever event they were at. And he's like, well, I was in the Marines. And she's like, oh, oh, okay. well, what did you do? And he's like, well, I was I was special. And she said, oh, yeah, what kind of special? (laughs) And then she started going down this road Mm -hmm. and the dude couldn't answer the question. And it's like. Do you just blindly mm-hmm. walk into spaces and just make stuff up? Mm-hmm. And it's crazy to me. Yes. And then it, it, thank you for saying that because it's not inclusive or exclusive to mm-hmm. prior service people. People do it in general. Oh, yeah. Which goes all the way back to the job pro- uh, application process. Mm-hmm. Nobody's sitting in there going, listen, every Tuesday, uh, Monday night I eat a Taco Bell, Tuesday I get bubble guts, I'm going to be late. <laughs> right? Nobody's right. telling you that. <laughs> Nobody uh, says I love to oversleep. Yeah. Because right. mm-hmm. I – and. Um, <laughs> punctuality is one of the things that I am horrible at, mm-hmm. but because I'm so bad at it, I make it a point to be on time. Does that oh, make sense? Oh, yeah. Right. I'm with you on the first part. I got to work on that second part. And yeah. so then I get really frustrated if I'm on time and then you're not because I know oh, I'm bad shoot. at being on time and yeah. I made an effort to be here so on time. <laughs> yeah. If I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like if I'm, if I'm able to accomplish <laughs> this very simple task, right? And you know, and at the end of the day, communication is important yeah. no matter what you do. If you're going to – if you land a job and you're going to be in there and you're you're going to spend a certain period of time learning what that job is, but in the same breath, the people that you're now surrounded with are going to be learning a part of you. Why would you create this environment where they are looking at you going, mm, something mm-hmm. doesn't seem right. Mm-hmm. right? You know, and you can identify those people relatively quick, right? Quick. Yeah. And being in the construction industry, there's a lot of hard heads and – rough people in general then you insert a bunch of prior service guys into that same boat there's a lot of personality traits to deal with right there is. and you know so you have to you have to be able to if you're going to be in a leadership position you have to be able to navigate all of that stuff and then i think one of the hardest things it took me becoming a civilian was this is your problem isn't my problem we're not in the service anymore right. i don't have to make sure that you're keeping your house clean, you've got groceries in there, mm-hmm. that you're not beating up your old lady on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, that's not my problem anymore. Mm-hmm. So when you come to me in the civilian world at a place that we work and we, we get paid to do, and you bring that problem to me as some sort of excuse or reason that you're not able to accomplish your job, mm-hmm. that's, not a, that's not a company problem, that's mm-hmm. a you problem. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's the hardest thing now. Everyone wants to make their problems your problem. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'll be 47 <laughs> in January. And, old enough in construction to have worked for some really 
hard guys, mm-hmm. right? And that was, they didn't care how bad a day mm-hmm. you had. They didn't care if you're fighting with your, none of that mattered. So now, now it's, oh, well, you know, my kid's sick or, you know, what, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, I'm sorry I'm late for the fifth time this month because, mm-hmm. you know, I had to take snuffles to the vet. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always snuffles. Right. <laughs> but I think there, and I just, I can't wrap my head around it because the whole time, and uh, guys smiling at me, the whole time you're in the military, you don't get sick days. Mm-hmm. You don't get to take your dog to the vet. Sure. You don't, like, you better find somebody else to do that for mm-hmm. you. You better hope your mom lives close because she's going to, guess what? She's taking that dog to the vet. She's taking your kids to the vet. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't get that time. Mm-hmm. And that's why everybody, I always, I always thought it was funny because when I was in, I would have lunch from 11.30 to 1. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, you get an hour and a half lunch? And I'm like, do you understand the stuff that I have to cram into this hour and a half? Because I'm mm. at work before all these places opened, and I'm right. leaving work when all these pla- the bank, the grocery store, uh, the UPS store, like anything that I had to do was closed while I was at work. Right. So that hour and a half for lunch was, was, was my time to right. do errands. Mm-hmm. And if I was able to squeeze a cheeseburger in there, mm-hmm. great. <laughs> but in the civilian world, it's like there's an excuse for everything. Everybody mm-hmm. wants some sort of sympathy or empathy for their situation, but then they don't reciprocate that right it's not look i'm i didn't i'm not paying you to be a caregiver to your children in addition to right x right and sure. so it's hard and and then you look like a complete and total jerk when mm-hmm. you say nice you know, catch that, nice. that's <laughs> not a that's not a that's not a company problem that's you problem mm-hmm. so either you sort it out or you're going to be replaced mm-hmm. right and then you have to kind of balance empathy in there mm-hmm. somewhere right and it, for sure it's tough <laughs> with an eye roll he said that with an eye roll <laughs> it's there's a generational <laughs> gap here somewhere yeah, um right. you know in i don't envy anybody who's sitting in a position now today in the last two or three years mm-hmm. when all of these things hit, the, the environment has changed the, right um the idea that we have to somehow be responsible for how other people feel and all this other junk mm-hmm. like i do not envy anybody that's doing that's a consistent hiring manager, mm-hmm. right? Now, if you're in a position so. where you're like, I need one person, and you're going to interview 10 people to get that one, cool. But if you're in a large corporation, a Walmart, an Amazon, something like that, and you're in charge of hiring, that's a, that's a, that's a job in itself, mm-hmm. right? You're not an operations or a VP guy. You're not, um, you're not in finance. You're, you're a hiring, an mm-hmm. onboarding manager. I wouldn't, you couldn't pay me enough mm-hmm. to do that job. I mean, you probably pay me a lot, but um, <laughs> I just I, I don't envy anybody who lives in that space because there's too many personalities. The mm-hmm. the good thing about being in the military was people just showed up and they're like, mm-hmm. "Congratulations, Mickey just got here from Fort Benning," and you're like, "Oh, you're screwed." Mm-hmm. And he got to do things my way. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to try and facilitate right. things his way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and I think that's a huge huge thing. And that's again it's a struggle. And then with what Coastal does, they're they're hiring staff. Right, so you have your own internal staff that does certain things, and then you're hiring PAs that are all independent. I say all, they're independent, and they have their own egos, and they want to work on their own time and all this other stuff. Right. How do you guys balance that? That's a tough one, but you know that's what we were talking about earlier in one of the earlier segments of with our size and our our ability to kind of shift focus or shift people around. If you have a if you have a PA that he's struggling because he's he's targeting uh, general contractors or roofing contractors. Well, he may be a guy more suited to go direct to customer and, you mm-hmm. know, meet with property managers or, you know, so there's, we have that availability to flex stuff around. So that's, that's one of the advantages of Coastal and our size is able to move those people around and say, hey, hey Daniel, you really, and you kill it every time you talk to a roofer, but every time you go out and talk to a property manager, it's, it's, it's horrible, right? Mm-hmm. So why are you wasting your time talking to the property managers? Mm-hmm. You just focus on roofers, and we'll take this guy over here that's right. horrible dealing with roofers, but he loves going to the you know the Boma trade shows and and going out to lunch with people and that. So you you just shift their focus that way. Yeah, and I think you have to be able to identify where those people are strong, and then so how mm-hmm. do you do that? You create performance incentive or performance improvement plans and performance incentive sure. plans and and things like that. Because if if you're going to facilitate growth in people, you have to give them information mm-hmm. to see where they're struggling. So. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about yeah, and we'll talk about that when we come back from the break. Um, this is Boots to Business. I'm Daniel Robowski. We'll see y'all in a few. Is that no lies? We now return to Boots to Business with Daniel Robowski. 
And welcome back, everybody. This is the last part of today's show. Uh, in studio, Melissa Jacob from Striking Brand. Hello, hello. And this portion of today's show is brought to you by Coastal Claim Services, your trusted partner in public insurance adjusting, headquartered here in Florida, serving clients nationwide. They specialize in first-party insurance claims, and when it comes to protecting your home or business and ensuring that you receive fair insurance compensation, you can count on their experienced team of public adjusters. You can find them at www.coastalclaims.net and let Coastal Claims be your advocate for hassle-free property insurance claims. Speaking of Coastal Claims, we have their Executive Vice President, Mickey Sprinkle, all the way in from Texas. <laughs> Not specific. Um, Not specific. So I know you haven't been in the public adjusting space for very long, so sure. you're, you're kind of learning – um, and I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah. So you're kind of learning the insurance side of things because I, I know the construction background that you have, I think we had a running joke at one point about what uh, burr roofs were. And right. I had no idea that you actually knew that. And I'd gotten so used to living in the insurance. And I'll, go, I'll tell you what it is in a yeah, minute. I know. Um, so you get so used to kind of living in a space in your own mm-hmm. head and you're, you're used to having the same conversation over and over and over again. And because I was a contractor first and then came into the – PA side, a lot of the means and methods and a lot of building specific stuff I know. And very typically that the insurance side guys don't know. So I just get used to having that conversation. And we were sitting in a meeting and one of the guys said, uh, it's a burr roof. And I said, hey, Mickey, that's a built up roofing. And we Mm -hmm. kept on moving and he caught me after the meeting. He said, hey, lots of swear words. (laughs) And um, he's like, you know that I know this, right? And I said, huh? Oh, crap. I'm sorry, man. Like Mm -hmm. it just, you get used to living in a space and you get used to being complacent and i think so burr roofs are built up roofing systems um and they're literally exactly that it's Mm -hmm. a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer okay um somebody's gonna hear that on the internet and they're gonna their keyboards lighting on fire Mm -hmm. right now but it's fine um (laughs) the whole point in that story is that openly communicating with people and not letting your ego kind of drive the direction that you want something to go whether it's the conversation the relationship your company whatever um i think a lot of times we get so used to having the conversation of hey let me tell you about all the stuff i know and at the end of the day it if it doesn't benefit the person on the receiving end who cares Mm -hmm. right but i think a lot of times there's that self-actualization that self-validation and the um what is it the self-fulfilling prophecy stuff like the well if i continue to tell you i know all of these things mm-hmm. eventually you're going to believe that i know these things and then mm-hmm. i'm going to believe I know just because you say it a lot of times doesn't necessarily make it true mm-hmm. exactly i mean ask anybody who is a, sp- uh, a special person in the military right <laughs> there, there's i mean there's so many jokes about all these guys because everybody what happens is it, people love to embellish mm-hmm. and when you have open communication you catch those people embellishing in times that you're like no that's not it. You mm-hmm. Remember we said it differently last time. Um, service members are notorious for this because they gauge your reaction to things. So if I say, I did three years in Iraq, four years in Afghanistan, most people go, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. If Some people, though, go, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I was on a PSD team in Afghanistan, so we were escorting um, mm-hmm. celebrities and stuff around. Still mm-hmm. crickets? Mm-hmm. Crap. Right. Um, so Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, Toby mm-hmm. Keith, Bruce Willis. Right. Oh, you saw Bruce Willis? Ah, now he has something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's drunk. Cause that's what he was all the time. You know, mm-hmm. but there now in that particular case, there's no embellishing, but then you it's there was that well, I didn't get the reaction that I wanted. Mm-hmm. So then all of a sudden what was five is now ten. What is ten was now fifteen. What mm-hmm. is you know, 15 is now 20, and, and it just keeps growing until the person gives you the appropriate response mm-hmm. to what you want and what you need. And, you know, you end up in this weird cycle of just now all of a sudden you're playing the one-up game with yourself mm-hmm. all the time. <laughs> and when we're, when we're talking about improving and growing employees or contractors under our charge, like, you have to be able to set those very clear boundaries for them so then they can't come in and embellish those things for you. Because if you ask any salesman in the world – they're going to come in and say, oh, I did X. Oh, yeah. And you're going to go, right. so it's a fifth of that. Got mm-hmm. it. You know, it's the, what's the old guy-girl rule? It's like every, whatever number a girl tells you she's been with, you multiply it by three, and every, whatever number a guy told you, you divide it mm-hmm. by three. Yeah, rule of three or something. Yeah, like it's, and it's the same thing in the sales world, right? If some salesman comes in, he's like, I did a million dollars in sales. He did 100,000 mm-hmm. in sales, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And 
Like, well, you sold one roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, right. it's it, all perspective, right? Yeah. So I did a million dollars in sales last year. Well, okay, that's one roof. That's, potentially, yeah. yeah. Or so you sold or one a job. Thousand. Yeah. Really underpaid jobs. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And so, I'm a huge advocate for performance improvement plans and in rubrics, right? So, um, I always like to break everything down into sets of five and I say mm -hmm. these are the five things that I expect out of you and then we're going to grade them and it always ends up on a scale of 25 and it's a it's a military thing so when you become a non-commissioned officer every year you get an NCOER an evaluation report and it's always zero to five or one to five and there's mm -hmm. five things on there and if you don't score three or better or I'm sorry it goes in reverse it's opposite so it, a one is great yeah I think that's right a one is the best that you can get mm -hmm. so if you're not a one or a two you have some splaining to do, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and so I always implement that anywhere I'm at in no matter who it is, no matter what their job is, there are five things that we can identify are the core thing for your job. Sure. And every quarter, if we're monitoring those things, then we can say, hey, Mick, this is where you need to improve. Mm -hmm. Those we, conversations are hard to have sometimes, though, because the, it's usually the thing that these people think they're amazing at mm -hmm. that they are awful at. But it's also when you start tracking those things, and having those open conversations, that's what makes the tough conversations not so tough, mm -hmm. right? Like, hey, this is what you've really done. You're not that busy. Or here's where you're excelling. Here's where you're not. But if you're not tracking that information, you don't know. There's nothing. That's where people get twisted, and that's where you hear, you know, bad employees mm -hmm. leaving or good employees. There's always some type of separation that goes mm -hmm. horribly because there's a lot of people getting fired that don't know they were doing anything wrong mm -hmm. because no one has sat them down and said, hey, here's what we, here's your expectations, and here's Here's where you need to be at the end of the year. Here's where you need to be at the end of the month, what, mm -hmm. whatever that mm -hmm. goal line is. If you keep moving the goal line, you can't really penalize your employees for that because you're moving the goal line. Yeah, right? and if there's nothing showing that you can you can show them, then people have the uh, availability to think, oh, well, they're just saying this. Or, right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we we're really excel at Coastal a lot, right? Mm -hmm. We're just with the systems and processes, a lot of them um, that Daniel started and a lot of them that I continue and then we refine on them. It's uh, monitoring the tracking and the, mm -hmm. being able to say, hey, here's where we're at or here's the communication. You know, that's a big one for us, mm -hmm. right? Communication with the contractor and the customer. Well, right? I know in the, the grading platform that I started there, three of the five things were communication related. Yeah. Because they have to be. As a public adjuster, that's the first thing that every single contractor or homeowner or building owner wants to gripe at you about mm -hmm. is communication. Right. The last PA I used said he was going to do this, and then he never, we didn't hear from him for six months, right? right. So yeah, we hear it all the time, right? Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's a big one, is communication. Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys communicate better. You guys, you know, hey, we love it. We copy you on all the emails, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's a coastal advantage, if there is one, right, to communication with everyone. And that's how you build great employees and that's mm -hmm. how you hire slow fire fast right mm -hmm. i hate that saying right like I know you with do. a passion i know i, I said that's that just for you you know but that's the thing is if they if you if people don't know what the expectation are you can't then hold them accountable it's your for, kids right yeah it's, it's no different than having you don't kids. ever walk in and tell your kid to clean his room up right. and mm -hmm. you walk in there it's dirty you don't get to lose your crap right because the room's dirty and the right. same thing applies with people that, that you're paying to do a job mm -hmm. if you don't give them some sort of right. idea of what they need to accomplish when they don't accomplish it, you don't. But then what it does, it opens you up for emotional responses to things, right? Yeah. And I have been in a bunch of companies mm -hmm. where that becomes a thing. It's like one thing happens, and then the person who has the ability to actually hire and fire goes in and they're like, we're firing Steve on Tuesday because he's wearing two left shoes and we don't like it. Like, mm -hmm. you're like, well, did you tell him he couldn't mm -hmm. wear two left shoes? Because if, right. you, if you didn't, you can't really fire the guy. You want right. to open yourself up for wrongful termination lawsuit yeah. because nobody really understands right to work and what that means. Nobody ever actually took the time to understand what the right to work laws mean. It does not mean that you can just fire people at will, mm. uh, although that's a lot of times what they do. So, um, Mickey, I really appreciate you taking the time to come over here today. We're going to yeah, record another it. episode and air it in a couple weeks after this and kind of get through the Christmas break because I'm not trying to do this over Christmas. Thank goodness. Um, right. So as we're wrapping up the show, I want to give a shout-out to a couple other sponsors. Um, we have Z Goalkeeper Academy, and I want to give a big, big, big shout-out to Rick Zuki, who is officially cancer-free about a week ago. Congratulations. Um, and he's putting some weight back on. He's getting comfortable. He's getting back yeah. out and getting uh, getting out there to the in the world. So – um, them, Apex Performance Chiropractic. This has been Boots to Business. I'm Daniel Robowski. Check us out on all the socials and at boots-2-business.com.